teachers and welcome to a live training all about word families just for you. If you teach kindergarten, first or second grade, this content has been created and curated just to help you in your journey as a teacher. So thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to be back with you tonight and let's begin with a little teacher roll call. Please react in one of these ways and let me know what you teach, okay? If you teach kindergarten, give me a heart. If you teach, I'm sorry, if you teach kindergarten, give me a wow. If you teach first grade, give me a heart. Second grade teachers, thumbs up. And if you are any other kind of educator, you know what you do, give me an other. And that includes parents that are homeschooling or those parents that are helping their students at home. You are teachers too, so give yourself a little credit and please react to me here. I'll let you know a little more about myself. My name is Tony, and I am a primary teacher, a content creator, and a little people fanatic. Creating content to help you help your little people in the classroom is what gives me energy and passion. So thank you so much for being here and helping me in that journey. Okay, let's talk a little bit about my friend, Peppy the Pencil. Do you give your students visual cues in the classroom so they know when to respond to you? Well, Peppy the Pencil is your visual cue tonight to let you know that you need to type something in the comments. So if you see Peppy, be sure to participate and be engaged. We need to practice what we preach, teachers. Is that right? So if you see Peppy, please write something in the comments. So let's get started with Peppy right away. Think fast and tell me how many students do you serve? Think about the number of students in your classroom, or if you're an administrator, the number of students in your school. Special education teachers, those numbers definitely vary. So go ahead and type in the comments. Let me know how many students you serve, and you never know, you might be part of the upcoming giveaway. So please do that now, and let me tell you about my class. I serve 22 amazing kiddos this year in kindergarten, and I've heard that they like to creep on my Facebook just a little. So if you're one of Miss Mullins' kiddos, thank you for watching, and you know I love you. So here are my cuties back at our Christmas performance, and weren't they just the cutest little snowmen you've ever seen? All right, so that's how many students I serve this year is 22. Let me tell you about the giveaway tonight. If you are engaged and you participate tonight, you may be part of this giveaway. This is a brand new product up on my TPT store and it is on sale to, for the next 24 hours because it's new. But this is something that has never been released before, but it is something that I have personally used in my classroom and my students love it. Actually, they love the alphabet version of this product. They haven't yet made it to the word family version, but that is coming up soon. So you could definitely win this tonight. So uh, remember that. But even if you don't win, I have to provide some kind of incentive for you to stick around. So this is my incentive to you tonight. You will receive a free set of three-letter Word Family posters. There are 23 posters included in there in two different versions. One version with more visual support and then more a version with more text support. And that advice came from my private uh, Facebook group, Primary Teacher Friends. You can find the, the link in the description. But those teachers said, we, we kind of like both versions. So I created both versions for you and they are completely free. I will be sharing that link with you towards the end of the video. So by now, I hope that you have entered in the number of students that you serve because Peppy is thinking of a number. Let's see what number Peppy is thinking of. And if you serve this many students or you are the closest to this number without going over, then you are a giveaway winner. Let's see what number he was thinking of. 
25. Wow, that is a lot of kids in a classroom. If you teach that many, kudos to you. You deserve to win. I've taught as many as 29 kindergarten kids and that was a little challenging, but okay, I survived. But we know bigger class sizes are not what we want or need in primary. Okay, let's do another giveaway with Peppy. Think fast. I am thinking of a, Peppy is thinking of a three letter word family word that is an animal. And you can type in as many guesses as you like, but please only type in one word per comment. A word family word that is an animal. Oh, let's talk about word families. Let me take a deep breath. Ah, word families are so much fun. They are so fun to teach. And that is a good reason to teach them, but not the best reason to teach them. But word families are so fun. And maybe I'm a nerd for thinking that, but they are fun. I've seen so much progress in students during word family instruction. And we're going to talk all about word families today. Uh, we're going to talk about what they are why you should teach them, when to teach them, and I'm going to give you some strategies and info about how to teach word families. So let's stick around for all that information tonight and let's begin with what are word families. So pretty simple, right? Word families are word uh, groups of words that have the same ending rhyme. That is called a phonogram and that is those red letters that you see here on this list. So word family words have the same phonogram at the end. And kindergarten teachers uh, use the simpler form of word families, which are three letter words. And then first and second grade teachers use the more complex uh, word families to teach more complex phonics skills. If you think about the house family, like in mouse, house, Spouse, those words are more geared towards the older students that are more phonetically developed. So that is what word families are, and you probably already knew that, but it's good to have a good understanding before we jump into why we should teach word families. So, of course, our common core standards tell us that word families are should be part of our instruction. But that is just a really boring reason to teach anything. Why do you teach word families? Well, the Common Core says I should. No. No, no, no. If you have ever taught word families, you know that's not the reason. But there is great power to be found within purpose teachers. Think about some real reasons to teach word families and more than likely you're going to be more energetic and effective in teaching them. So I'm going to give you three deeply wonderful reasons to teach word families. That way when you're asked this question, if you ever are, or when you're preparing your instruction, you can think of a good purpose as to why you're teaching this content. Purpose number one. Oh, word families are so great for the spoken word and symbol connection. We're thinking about the phonological skills and the text that goes along with it. Word families are perfect for combining these two things. Think about how horrible the English language is and how inconsistent it is. But word family words sound the same at the end and they look the same at the end. So when we're trying to develop that spoken word concept to our students, word families are perfect for that. So that is a really good reason to teach word families. They can finally make those tough connections with text. Okay, let's think of another purpose. Oh, word families are superior in helping our students decode words. Think about sounding out a three letter word with all three phonemes or sounds versus sounding out a chunk or a phonogram of a word. How much quicker that is. When our students become fluent in that area, wow, can they decode quicker. And it's just another tool added to their toolbox of decoding skills, things that they can use to decode unknown words. Let me tell you this. Whenever our students become fluent with thir the 38 most common phonograms, guess what? They can suddenly decode 654 words. 
That's amazing. So, of course, word families are a superior decoding skill. And let's talk about our last purpose is confidence boosting. We need to give our little people confidence. You know why? Because that is engagement. When you're good at something and you feel great about your performance, then you are engaged with that content. And yes, these are confidence boosters, these word families, because students can read them and suddenly they perceive themselves as readers and every word family word that they can confidently decode is a little imaginary vote towards themselves as being readers. So I hope that makes sense. They see themselves as readers, they read more words, they're confident, and it's just awesome. Word families are great, okay? So that is our rock star teacher reasons for teaching word families. It's not because the Common Core tells me to do it. It's because my heart tells me to do it, and I know that my students need this in their lives. So there you go. That is why we teach word families. Now, let's talk about Peppy again. Peppy was thinking of a word family animal. And I'll give you another hint in case no one has guessed it yet. I will be checking this at the very end of tonight's live. But this animal has horns. And it likes to run into things. And it's a word family word. <laughs> That's about all I can give you. There we go. Let's see what animal Peppy is thinking of. He's thinking of a ram. If you guessed ram, then you are a giveaway winner. I'm going to demonstrate that product for you at the end of tonight's live so you'll know exactly what you've won. And now Peppy is thinking of a word family word that is a place to live thinking of a word family word that is a place to live. Remember, those are three letter word family words. Okay, so let's move into when to teach word families. And it may seem, you know, such, like such an easy thing to know, but really, when is it appropriate to introduce word families to your whole group for your whole group instruction? Well, I'm gonna give you some pointers here and I want you to really think about these two areas. We're thinking about phonological awareness and we're thinking about the letter and sounds fluency of our whole group. Now we know we're going to have students who are lagging behind who need RTI services, of course, but as a whole group, your students need to have certain skills and these two areas are very, very important. So let's talk about the phonological awareness side of things. I think phonological awareness is one of the most important things we can focus on as primary teachers. Phonological awareness is that foundation that we need to set for our students before they can become fluent readers. Okay, it's very, very important. And here are some individual skills that are important before introducing word families to your whole group. So there's the concept of spoken word. If our kids don't understand what a word is, for instance, if they're reading a sentence and they're not even, they're just, it's all one big word, or they're looking at a, a word and calling it a letter, they don't have a very good understanding of co the concept of spoken word. So if they don't have that, if they don't understand what a word is, then they probably need some more instruction in that area before they're prepared to understand the text version of a word. Also, rhyming is very important. All word family words rhyme, and yes, word family words can build up a student's understanding of rhyme. But when you think about seeing a chunk and understanding that all those chunks rhyme, then it's very important that we understand how rhyming words are structured. They sound the same at the end. So if you notice your students are still sounding out individual phonemes in your word family words, that may mainly have a weakness in the area of rhyming. So just keep that in mind. 
And also beginning sounds are very important because of course word family words are rhymes with an onset. So they need to be able to take off that onset and put it back in place. And if they don't understand beginning sounds, that could be very, very tough for them. So those are some phonological awareness skills that are important to the concept of word families. And there are more, but those are the three that I wanted to focus on tonight. If your students are lagging in this area, go back and reteach these skills before you delve too deep into word families. All right, let's talk about letters and sounds fluency. This means your students see letters and they are fluent with immediately producing its sound, okay? If they don't recognize the letter or can't produce its sound, then obviously they're not ready for words. So it's okay if your students are behind in this area too. There's actually some free resources on my website that will help you up their letter and sound fluency. So check those out. And if they're not ready in these two areas, it's okay. It's great actually that you've noticed that and that you realize you need to go back and reteach those foundational skills. Don't skip out on the foundational skills because you'll be building a house on sinking sand. Our students need a firm foundation here before we move on to these other concepts. So don't panic and good for 